Good morning and welcome on this wonderful fall morning. Anybody else feeling like the cool and all the colors and the leaves? It's fabulous and I'm glad that you decided to be here this morning. Um, I know I was talking to other people like, ooh, I almost slept through my alarm this morning, I think because of the weather. So I'm glad that you didn't and that you're here. A couple of announcements, please make sure to pull out your green insert in your bulletin. This has all of the announcements and everything that you need to know. Speaking of all things fall, Halloween is almost right around the corner. A couple wonderful things happening. First, we'll be sponsoring Trunk or Treat on Saturday, October 29th. That will be open to the community from one to three. However, we need your help to make this event a success. If you have a trunk, we need it. So sign up and uh, you can decorate your, your trunk and you can hand out candy. We also need folks to help uh, donate candy as well as to help just decorate overall for the event. There's also a lot of glow up Halloween things that we put out and all the things. So for information, you can contact Rochelle or also contact our front office and we'll get you connected there. And then the day after that on October 30th is Reformation Sunday as well as the rite of confirmation. So please make sure to wear your red, bring your singing voices, which you always do. And we're excited because we'll also be celebrating the rite of confirmation with Reed and Grady and their families. So please do not miss that. And then there will be a reception to follow. This week is our, my new Bible study that I'm starting, Faith After Doubt, which will be on Zoom starts this Tuesday. Please join me. It's from 6.30 to 8, just three weeks, based on a book by Brian McLaren, not our Brian McLaren. I always have to, he's like, no, I did not write this. Um, it's interesting. They have the same name, though, but two different people. Uh, talking about how doubt and asking questions is a normal and healthy part of our faith journey. So please join me for that. Um, also, Karen Ryan has been faithfully working to clean out our supply closet has done another round of cleaning, and there are a bunch of supplies in the room next to the library. If you think you can use them or have a purpose for them, please go walk over there and check and take whatever you'd like. We don't want to waste anything. We'd like to reuse that. And my last announcement is a sad announcement because our dear organist and accompanist Cynthia is retiring. And so her last Sunday with us will be October 30th. Cynthia, you will be dearly missed. You are such a blessing and a joy as you faithfully lead us in worship, but we wish you all the best on your retirement. Uh, we do have um, that kind of posted throughout. So if you know anybody in your circles that plays organ and accompanies and all the things, please let us know. And uh, we will journey through all of this together. So those are all of our announcements this morning. And now I'll invite us to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with our musical meditation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. You are invited to either remain seated or please kneel for our confession.
God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Our gathering song is number 627 in your red hymnal, 627, O Day Full of Grace. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You will notice, hold on, Cynthia, you'll notice that on the cover of your worship folder is the Luther seal. And our liturgy for the next three weeks as we ramp up to Reformation Sunday is uh, the liturgy that Luther instituted back in 1523. It was called the Deutsche Ordnungsmesse. Um, the German order of the mass. And uh, so each one of these hymns that we're singing in the liturgy are directly tied to Luther, either with music or with text. Our Kyrie 
is from the hymn, Out of the Depths I Cry to You. We'll sing verses one and four. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord God, hear me calling. Incline your ear to my distress, in spite of my rebelling. Do not regard my sinful deeds, send me the grace my spirit needs. Without it I am nothing. My soul is waiting for you, Lord, as one who longs for morning. No watcher waits with greater hope than I for your I hope as Israel in the Lord, who sends redemption through the word. Praise God for grace and mercy.
Let us pray. O oh Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and kiddos, come on up for a sermon for all of God's kids. You can join me up front here as always. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm going to try not to start singing that song again. All right. Come on and join us. Come on up. There's room. There's space, I promise. All right. Hi. All right. Good morning. Okay, question. You better be glad I was ready for you there, buddy. All right. Does anybody know what it means to pray? Prayer. What is prayer? Hmm. Y'all need a lifeline? You need a help? <laughs> All right, you can ask the congregation for help. They need some help. What does it mean to pray? What is a prayer? Anybody? Mm, Talk to God. Yeah. That's you it. Fold your head, you, fold your head. you fold your hands, right? Some people do and some people don't, right? But some people have a way that they like to pray. Prayer is simply talking to God. That's it. Being in conversation with God. Because God is is a loving, caring parent who wants to talk to us and be in relationship to us. So what do we oftentimes talk to God about? Do you all talk to God sometimes? <laughs> Remember, it doesn't have to be with these big, fancy words. It doesn't have to be only here in church. It could be at home, at school. It could be anywhere. Do you all ever talk to God? Yes. Yes. What do you talk to God about? <laughs> You talk about things that you're learning in school, right? You might be sharing that. Or ways that you can serve your family, asking God to help you, right? Like folding your clothes is a really cool way you can serve your family, right? I know sometimes when I talk to God, I ask for patience. I ask for peace. I ask for hope, strength, food, right? Nourishment and things that we need. Now, now here's a question that's going to maybe, maybe scramble your brain this morning. Are you ready? You think that's funny? Okay, that's good. If God could pray to you, what would God say to you? You don't know? What do you think? I love you. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. God says to us, I love share you. Toys. That's it, right? Share toys. Yes, God says to us, share, love one another, be kind, right? Share out of the abundance that you have to be generous with others. Yes, if someone needs help, God says, can you help them out for me, right? Because we are God's kids and the body of Christ Whoa. in the world, right? In a little bit, we're going to hear a story, a parable of Jesus, where Luke, the writer, invites us to continue to pray and to not lose heart. And as we talk with God, God also talks with us. God reminds us that God loves us no matter what because we're God's kids. And God asks us to continue to live into that, right, by sharing the things that we have, and by being God's vessels of life and love. So this week, what I want you to do is have your ears open for the ways God is praying to you to make a difference in your little corner of the world. Because when we all make a little difference in our little world, guess what happens? It all adds up into something truly magnificent, right? So how about, since we've been talking about prayer, let's pray together. Everybody take your okay. hands like this and let us pray. Dear God, Thank you for always listening to us. And thank you for always talking with us. Let us hear your voice and love and serve all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends, and you can head back off to your seats. Now you see that he opened the streets. Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. 
he took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place. I'm going to listen to this now, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how far from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. We speak the acclamation together. Alleluia, the word of God is living and active, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. True confession time. As a parent, sometimes I give in to my kids just a little too easily. I don't know if you've ever had that experience before. It usually happens when I'm really tired and I'm in survival mode and I just want to get through the day in one piece. 
Fine, you want chicken nuggets for dinner? Great, if you'll just get out of the kitchen and stop asking when dinner's ready, you can have them. Sound familiar to anybody? Okay, everyone's laughing. I'm glad I'm not the only one. My kids are like, oh, that's why, see, my kids are laughing at me. That's why mom does that. Or fine, if you want the pack of gum at the cash register checkout, great, just stand still and let us get out of the store and you can have gum. Okay, so, so that's where my mind was as I was reading today's gospel text. And I was wondering if that's how the unjust judge feels. Fine lady, if you'll just leave me alone, stop bothering me, I will grant you whatever amount of justice you want. Right, so I wondered if the unjust judge was a little bit of a frustrated parent. But I think the challenge with this parable and with any parable that we might read is that we try to figure out, okay, well, who is God in this parable? And commentators over the centuries, for some reason, have tried to equate God with the unjust judge, which really doesn't make any sense, does it? Because if we read the parable in that light, all of a sudden, if we just pray hard enough, or if we just pester and bother and annoy God enough, God will finally give in and give us what we want. Like God is some magician up in the sky granting wishes to whoever can pray loud enough. Well, I know that's not how prayer works, and I also know that's not who God is. So what are we to make of this parable today? Well, what was really helpful for me was, as always, to put this into the greater context of what Luke is doing in his gospel. So this parable is sandwiched in between two stories about the inbreaking of the reign of God. This already not yet. And Luke is writing to a community of people who are yearning for the return of Christ. Now they have the vision of God in their hearts. They've seen Christ crucified and risen from the dead but they're not there yet. That's that not yet. There's still division, pain, and brokenness. And so they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? What does Jesus want us to do as we wait? And so the community began to get discouraged, downtrodden, disheartened, unsure, and uncertain. And so enter this parable. Luke tells us that Jesus tells this parable in order that the community may not lose hope and may continue to pray. So think of this parable as a way to reground in one's purpose as a child of God. A story of hope, a story of promise. So let's rehear the parable again in that context. So there's an unjust judge. That judge doesn't love God and has no concern for anybody but himself. And there's a widow, and she continues to come asking for justice and her cries are going unheard. Now, remember that during this time, widows were some of the most vulnerable people in the society, so much so that scripture makes special provisions to make sure that they are taken care of. But widows just aren't vulnerable. In scripture, they're also tenacious. Think of like Ruth and Naomi, these women that refuse to take no for an answer. And so this widow refuses to take no. She tenaciously keeps on coming to this unjust judge until finally he says, fine, you're driving me crazy. You're wearing me out. I will grant you the justice that you request. Here's a fun little side note. So when the unjust judge says that word, wear me out, the Greek for that means to beat black and blue, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I never had heard that before. It, it actually brings up this image of boxing. Think of two boxers duking it out in the boxing ring. Okay, that's what this brings about. It can also mean to bring about intolerable annoyance. Okay, so you can kind of get the feel for what this widow is doing to this judge, right? And so finally at the end, Jesus says, you know, if this unjust judge can finally muster enough for whatever reason to grant justice, imagine how much more God will be able and willing to do for God's children. So church, here we are, 
in the 21st century, living into that same reality that those disciples in Luke were living in as well, this already not yet. We have the vision of God in our hearts and in our spirits, but it's not yet fully arrived. This week I've been mulling about unjust judges and those people or those things or those systems in our world that don't love God, that don't love other people, that don't care for anything other than themselves, and they continue to divide and separate and pull apart humanity, are only concerned for themselves. And so we're living in kind of this, all right, well, we see God's vision of oneness and the promise that God's life and love win, but yet there's all of this division and destruction and icky stuff going on. What are we supposed to do? Sit around? Wait? Be discouraged? Pray and ask God to take care of it? Or something else? I think the wisdom in today's parable is that Jesus is inviting us to live courageously, to live with tenacity, to boldly step out and with intolerable annoyance, call out the unjust judges of our world, anything and everything that stands counter to God's vision of oneness, to God's love and life. Be willing to call that out and to make a difference in our world. And here what we find is that prayer is moved from words to action, and faith is moved beyond belief to a way of life. In order that when Jesus does look around, what will Jesus find? A group of people who've just been waiting, or a group of people who know that the world is not as it should be and refuse to take no for an answer? The question is, do we have the courage to be like that widow in today's text? I think we do. I know I struggle with it though. The reason why is because we look out into the world and oftentimes the problems and the brokenness seem so big. How can me, my own old little self over here, make any difference in the world? Have you ever asked that question before? Right? And sometimes we just get stuck. I, I don't know where, what to do or where to go. And I think oftentimes living with this tenacity and living with courage often means just showing up. Remember we talked about faith a couple weeks ago about just doing that which needs to be done? That's it. Now, sometimes we don't get to see the fruits of our labor. That's God's work to do. But we trust that what we're doing is walking down the road of love and life. It's why we continue to show up to the gathering place every month. It's why we continue to donate non-perishable food to the community table. It's exactly why we continue to donate socks and hats and mittens and make casseroles and burritos for the rising. It's why we continue to gather here each and every single week. It's why we continue to check in on family members and friends, write cards, make phone calls. It's why we continue to invest in the least among us, especially our kiddos. Sometimes we get so worried about the outcome and the big things and how everything's going to be ending up. Jesus today invites us, just be present. Just be present in the here and the now. Hear God's voice calling out and respond, trusting that God will take care of the rest. So this is how Jesus lived his life. Jesus was fully present and lived as the son of God he was called and created to be. He lived with courage. He always was calling out the unjust judges of the world and pointing humanity and drawing humanity back to God's vision of oneness. Anything that sought to separate and divide humanity, Jesus erased the line and walked right over it. And of course, this is ultimately what got Jesus nailed to a cross. But we know that that's not how it ends because in three days, God, through the Holy Spirit, raised Jesus from the dead to show us that God's life and God's love win. And it's through that promise of the empty tomb that that is how we find the courage to be tenacious and to go out and to name and speak the truth in love because we actually know already how the story ends, really how it begins, with that stone rolled away and God's promise to make all things new. 
You know, I guess if God is anybody in this parable, you know who I think God is? The widow. God always sides with the poor and the lonely and the oppressed. God always sides with the most vulnerable in our community. And I feel as if God is calling out to us, now is the time. Continue to be faithful. Go on your way in love and service of all people. So church, when you look out into the world, what are those unjust judges that you see at work that are counter to God's reign? And how is God calling you to bring intolerable annoyance to them? Okay, you could say beat black and blue, but I don't really like that imagery, so we're just gonna stick with the intolerable annoyance. And remember that it happens oftentimes in small ways. Think of a little pebble. Think of your life as a pebble that's dropped in a pond, and what happens? The ripples flow out. And when we combine through the spirit everything and all the ways that we love and serve, God takes that and adds it up to do something extraordinary and truly magnificent for our world. So continue, continue to be faithful, church, and may God continue to unite us and what as one and send us forth as a living body of Christ in the world so that all may have life and have life abundantly. Amen. The song of the day in your red hymnal is number 717, 717, let justice flow like streams. Please stand as you are able. and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Each prayer concludes with, hear us, O God, and the congregation responds, your mercy is great. You kneel of your children. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who walk in the work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all who are lonely, especially for those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or county, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. Hear us, O God. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We've been asked to pray for Bob Fisher and family as he is hospitalized in Minnesota. He's a friend of Fred and Dottie Holden's. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through the word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ to be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Blessed are you, holy God, the first and last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people and promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, 
You sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts and at last feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated. Lamb of God, pure and sinless, once on the cross and offering, patient, lowly, guiltless, forsaken in your suffering, from sin's grasp you have torn us, from gloom to hope have borne us, grant us your mercy, oh Jesus. Lamb of God, pure and sinless, once on the cross and offering, patient, lowly, guiltless, forsaken in your suffering, from sin's grasp you have torn.
now together we will partake of this feast that God sets out for all people and all are welcome to the table for the gifts of God are free. First, we'll invite those who are worshiping online with us today to commune at home or wherever you find yourself. If you have some bread and some wine or some grape juice, we'll take the meal together. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now for those who wish to come forward to receive communion, please follow the direction of our ushers. And if you need communion brought out to you, please let our ushers know, and we'll be more than happy to do that. During communion, we'll sing hymn number 462, Now We Join in Celebration. It's printed on page 10 of your worship folder.
Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for our blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our standing song is printed on page 11 of your worship folder, If You But Trust in God to Guide You. Christ beside you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.